everyone, Melting Man 234 here with another action figure review. And before I begin, I will ask you to buy my unkilled, uh, roadkill turtles. Yes, buy them all because I am popular and stuff on the internet. <laughs> yeah. Well, I wouldn't consider myself being overly popular on YouTube. I mean, comparing me to other big shots like Angry Video Game Nerd, Ashens, Mike Mozart, um... A bunch of other characters, yeah, I'm kind of in the lesser known or sort of known uh, popularity. But uh, anyway, as you already know, I already did series 1 through 6 of the NBC figures, and I briefly showed two Jack figures that I didn't get to do. So now I get to do them, and these are actually exclusive figures. Ooh, those fancy special ones that you can only find at uh, conventions and eBay auctions and all that. So they've already did... Um, well, they've only did two of these, so obviously we'll be starting off with Pirate Jack. Yar, yo ho ho, and all that jazz. So yeah, we have um, Jack pretty much uh, naked, except for his shirt that he's wearing. Now, this is pretty interesting, because this character is actually based off of a character from the film, James and the Giant Peach, that Disney made, and Tim Burton had something to do with it, which was also based off of a book by Riddle Doll by the same name, uh, that was a bit weird. Nine. But yeah, book by the same name that only I have read and everyone else hasn't. Well, I'm sure maybe a few people have actually read the original book. But um, if you haven't, I will point out that the movie is um, very close and shares... Well, it's pretty much... Uh, Pretty much the same as the uh, book. Yeah, the movie is the same as the book. So with a few changes here and there. So anyway, in the film, the giant peach, which is... Um, flying because it's been hooked up to like three million seagulls it's flying and then it gets lost in the middle of the antarctic and so the centipede goes down underwater with all these sunken pirate ships to find a compass to help them get to new york and he finds one held by pirate jack and his army of undead pirates which is uh one being a eskimo one being a viking character one being a pirate with one eye and the other one being donald duck but anyway let's get to the actual figure instead of my random babbling <laughs> So yeah, here he is, being all dead and partially naked. It's um, it's like the designs of the uh, coat that he actually does and the little beard. So he has a few movable joints, like he can move his head, he can move his arms around, yep, open them up, and he can bend them and bend his little hands, yep, and then his feet, which he can pretty much do the same, lift them and then bend them. Although they actually don't twist around, and same thing with the arms, they don't have that uh, twistable joint. Which is kind of uh, interesting. And the odd thing is, is that right in his um, cross area, it's, um, it's a little bit painted skin color instead of white. I'm not sure why they did that. Maybe that's to prevent from, um, like, supposedly this is supposed to be like his underwear or something so that Jack doesn't show off his boner. Right. <laughs> so, oh yeah, you also notice there's a little... Um, uh, marking on his head, and that's for one of his accessories, which is this little hat that he gets to wear. And they're pretty much uh, magnets right here. So yeah, yeah, put that on. So there. Now he's a real pirate because he has a pirate hat. Now I will say the magnets are a bit weak. I'm not sure if uh, they've kind of um, lost their touch over the years or something, but with one slightest move... They, the hat just falls off and falls flat on the floor because, hey, that's a common thing with these figure reviews. I always have to drop something, mainly by pure accident. <laughs> but yeah, let's move on to the accessories, which are other accessories that he has. Like his little compass, right here. Yeah, there it is. It's actually a little bit of gold glitter you can actually kind of see. And there's his little chains, because it actually does have chains. Comes with his sword so that he can stab people. Uh, uh. And I'm not sure if he can hold it. This uh, hand kind of looks like it can hold it. Well, let me see. Nope. Yeah, in the picture it shows Pirate Jack holding his sword, but trying to get this character to hold its sword is very difficult. Um, oh yeah, here's another one. His little skeleton parrot, which I find pretty funny because this was a creature from the film. And yet there he is being all skeleton-like. <laughs> and then he comes with this flag, which is this. Whoosh, yar, we're pirates with this very long pole. And it actually connects together, so a quick demonstration. Yeah, so it just connects like that. And then you connect them right around here. And you connect it here. And there, it's a pirate flag, yar. 
Now, this is interesting how they actually did one based off of that small little uh, Jack Skellington cameo of James the Giant Peach. But I will say Pirate Jack is pretty cool, especially with his manly beard. Which is a bit odd, because if he's dead, then by that time the hair would have already fallen off his chin or something. Uh, I don't know. I will say Pirate Jack is pretty cool. And for our next one, which is our last one, which is probably the best out of them all, is Vampire Jack. Blah, I'm going to taste your blood. Now, at first I didn't know what this was supposed to be based off of, but after doing a bit of research, I'm, some, I'm assuming that this Phantom Jack is based off of uh, a costume called Phantom Jack that appears in the video game Oogie's Revenge, that basically it's a video game that acts as a sequel to the film. So anyway, there's um, a section where you can unlock costumes depending on how good your grades are with the levels. And if you manage to get all S ranks on all the chapters, which is the highest rank you can get, you'll get Phantom Jack. And if you've actually seen Phantom Jack and you look at this, it's pretty much the same design as Phantom Jack. The only difference is that the cape is modeled a bit different. It's a bit more straight and not crooked. And the inside is gray instead of purple. And for some reason, there, uh, there seems to be a bit of glitter in there. Well, let's hope Jack is not one of those vampires. <laughs> well, yeah, anyway, the whole design is pretty cool with him being all black and his suit. I like that little bow tie, how it looks uh, a little bit more cooler. But yeah, anyway, he has uh, movable joints here and there. He has um, movable arms that can move. And it can actually twist around and yeah, bend them. And then bend his little hand right there. And then his legs pretty much do the same thing. Yeah, they bend, and then they can also twist and bend like that. It's there. Now it looks like he's standing on a podium or something. Or in this case, my finger. <laughs> well, yeah, the design is pretty cool for uh, Vampire Jack. And he comes with a few accessories. Like this creepy candelabra that actually looks pretty cool. I always wondered if, um, I wonder if this would be, uh, Lumiere's demented cousin. <laughs> if he was like this, um, mutated candelabra. That would be a bit weird. And another accessory he has is a little rat. And I'm assuming it's, uh, it looks more like the rat that was seen in the film, like, for one second when he's wearing his little party hat and nibbling on his cheese. But here he is looking more creepy and demented with his, like, big bug eye, which... The face kind of reminds me of King K. Rule because it has one normal eye and one bug eye sticking out. Well, yeah, here he is, just scurrying. Very nice. And the next accessory, which is... If I can get this out, is this. Yes, it's a weird arch-looking thing. Now you'll be thinking, what the heck is it for? Well, it's for these bats. Whoosh! Yes, these very... Cool, detailed-looking bats that have red eyes. Yeah, And you'll notice on the back, there's a little um, connector thing, pole. Well, that's what this base is for. So, get these characters in. So there, you'll have a tran uh, translucent background, and then it looks like they're flying. Whoosh! <laughs> oh, yeah, the other accessory I forgot to mention is his base. Now, with Pirate Jack, it's the common black base, but this one's a little bit different. You'll see there's the pegs, and there's a little um, stand. And the interesting thing is that if you get the character in there... Well, let's see if I can hopefully get him in there. Eh. Mm. Oh, yeah, you get him in there like that. And this little um, stand thing, it's actually supposed to hold his cape so that it kind of stays straightened, and that's pretty cool. But yeah, I will say a Vampire Jack is probably one of the best exclusive figures that they have. If somebody did a random fan art of Edward from Twilight going up against Vampire Jack, it's pretty obvious who would win. Me, because I am awesome, and Jack Skellington kicks ass and stuff. Blah! <laughs> yeah, let's get this out of the way. Whoops. <laughs> now I actually did drop something by mistake. <laughs> I have completed the whole conspiracy of the Melting Man 2, 3, 4 action figure reviews. Or something, whatever. But yeah, there's your collection of exclusive figures. They are pretty cool and all that, and of course, when they were made, they weren't released in stores that much. And as I said, only in conventions and random eBay auctions. And I think they still have them on eBay. They might either be about 20 bucks or maybe even higher than that. I don't know. But yeah. 
I have a few more uh, figures to do, like next is going to be the box sets, which is going to be probably a lot of jump cuts because how big these are, then one more NBC figure series, unless I decide to throw in the minifigures. But anyway, this is Melting Man 234 signing out.